Hello guys and dolls, welcome back. We are at Form Next 2025. This is our fourth year here at the largest 3D printing and additive manufacturing show in Europe. We've got lots of exciting stuff coming up. Stay tuned, see you in the next video. So a quick pause from the video to say a thank you to the sponsor of this video and of the channel, Frozen, and talk about the printer that we've been playing with a lot recently, the Frozen Mega 8KS. The best way I can describe this thing is it just makes big resin projects feel normal. You know when you see a huge model on Etsy or a full-size army and you think, oh, that'd be really good. I definitely can't do that on my machine. That is all fixed by the sheer size and volume you can print with with this machine. The build plate is huge, so we've been doing full trays of minis all in one go, big terrain pieces, chunky props, and it has handled it without any drama. You set it up, you slice it, you hit print, and it just gets on with it. It's really nice not having to chop everything into tiny sections, make inorganic cuts, it, just to try and make it fit. And even though it's a big machine, you still retain all of that crisp 8K detail that you want from resin. This thing does textures on cloaks, little rivets, tiny text, and it all shows up nice and clean, nice and crisp. On the table, in a camera, it just looks sharp. There are some good quality of life bits on this as well. The lid design makes it nice and easy to fit it in normal spaces. The whole printer feels like it's built for people who are actually using it every day and not just for a spec sheet and a bunch of flashy marketing things. If you're thinking about stepping up to a larger resin printer, whether it's for batch commissioning, full printing armies, or just finally doing one giant centerpiece model that you've been putting off, you have to look at the Mega 8KS. Use the link in the video description and a big thanks to Frozen for supporting the channel. Now let's get back to the video. Hello guys and dolls, welcome back. We are at CFSIS and we are taking a look at the A500 Pro, a glass fiber and carbon fiber continuous fiber printer. Talk to me a little bit about specs, what this machine can do and talk to me about CFSIS to begin with. Okay, hi, good morning guys. So uh, our company is called CFSIS. We are in the industry uh, for about like uh, two years. This is our second time from Next. Uh, what we're bringing here is uh, we're trying to offer a solution for continuous fiber FDM 3D printing. What we're providing is uh, the equipment, which is uh, 3D printers and uh, cap uh, filament uh, systems. And also we're offering all the materials related to uh, continuous fiber uh, 3D printing. Uh, besides that, we also provide the software uh, which is all encoded, uh, that including uh, basic FDM slicing and the second part is uh, the computer simulation for fiber uh, deposition in the, in the parts. Cool, so talk to me about the machine itself. So if we hop the little handle here, we can see that what we're working with here is an absolutely massive machine. So build volume on this is what? Build volume is 408 by 355 by 510. So you've got half a meter on the Z, which is pretty unique in the space. You guys have got partnerships with a lot of different providers with a lot of different use cases. You can, we'll throw up some stuff in the minute of, of, of places they've done, but they're already working with, um, with different providers around car parts and doing things for large-scale manufacturing, the robot industry, and probably more interestingly, they're also doing um, fully printed drones. Now, one of the issues that you generally have when you try to 3D print frames for drones is that they just aren't as durable as the injection molded parts that you could normally buy. But talk me through why this is different, why what you've done to make this so much more robust. Exactly, okay. Well. So uh, what we're seeing here is, uh, uh, is, a, is, a, is a drone case for the DJI Mavic series. So uh, the project is actually coming from a collaboration with a local uh, drone club. Uh, so we're seeing lots of uh, complaints about people buying a brand new drone, but uh, they enjoy flying, however, incident can happen. So, and also it's very expensive to replace the, the, the case. 
So what we uh, we uh, we offer to to the club is that uh, we provide our printers, and they uh, they they they, uh, they are able to to uh, replicate the uh, uh, DJI uh, Mavic case uh, with uh, continuous fiber nylon um, being 3D printed, uh, which is offering a very lightweight compared with uh, the original plastic case, and also with uh, the improved strength that's been brought by the the carbon fiber being embedded into the material. Okay, so I mean, yeah. this is so. Again, one of the issues you normally have is that when you try to print the parts, you're now talking about having something that's not mechan as, as mechanically solid as the either metal parts or the injection molded parts. But you're saying that this is mechanically stronger and lighter than both the injection molded and the metal parts that you would normally get when you're when you're when you've got these machines out, right? Yeah. So to speak for that, actually, there are two parts playing a place an important uh, role here. Is I would say. First part is uh, the design. So because we're doing 3D printing, that means we have a uh, um, uh, limitedness of uh, uh, design approach. So in a, like a drone application, uh, the 3D printing actually enables the user to, uh, to use the generative design to have these crazy shapes of, uh, 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 for maybe say the landing, landing, landing gear leg, so which can help them have a, a reduced weight of design and also uh, by, by leveraging the 3D printing, uh, we're able to make that part being produced. And also uh, for, for parts like that, because we have the, where usually they're being printed with nylon. So first of all, it's very lightweight and they're very impact resistance. And also because we're embedding the fiber, carbon, in this case it's carbon fiber. So the carbon fiber is adding the extra stiffness to that landing gear parts. So which is a, it's prone for like an impact uh, during many cycles of flying. So it's a, very, it's a very good application for using continuous carbon fiber for drone application here. So there's a fair amount of application for industrial materials, right? Where nylons and things like that. Certainly when you're dealing with parts that have gone out of service and you're no longer able to get spare parts, but you are normally making some sort of compromise there. You are normally saying that we can now get the parts to extend the life of this piece of equipment. But what you're saying is that some, and there's an example over here where you've, we've done a guide block where it replaced a steel part and it's not only replaced the steel part to get the piece working, but it's mechanically stronger and 48% lighter than the original part that was designed and milled out of, out of steel. So there's less waste to produce it, it's, it extends the life, and it has more production life cycle than the actual original part did. So we're not just replicating something, you know, we're not just replicating a part we can't get anymore, it's a replication and improvement on the material that it was originally made out of. So talk to me a little bit about how it's doing that. So obviously um, this one's the Pro, which means it comes with a material cupboard down the bottom. How many materials can you put in, in there at any one time? Yeah, so for our cabinet uh, filament system here, it actually stores four spools over one kilo uh, spool size, and it also serves as like a, a, a fitting system to the machine. So also, when one material runs out, it can automatically switch to the same material in, the, in storing the system. So it, it allows the print, uh, users to have non-disrupted -disrupt, printing uh, um, uh, operation time. So how versatile are those spools? So obviously, one of those spools has to be the fiber reinforcement. But does they go in the bottom cupboard, or do they go somewhere else on the print? Like, do they, do they need to go in the material cupboard, or are they somewhere else? Yeah, thanks for that question. So actually, um, uh, the base, the base cabinets are for uh, for the main, the main polymer, which is usually like the, the nylon or PET, depending on user choice. Uh, the, the carbon fiber or, or the glass fiber part is actually there's a small, smaller spool holder in the back of the machine, but just because the, we want to reduce the travel distance for the for the carbon fiber parts, so it will it will fit more directly from the back of the machine to the to the nozzle system here. So to the glass fibers, I mean, I suppose they're not temperature sensitive, they're not humidity sensitive, so they don't need to be in a sort of a climate controlled cupboard. Whereas when we're talking about nylons and PPS, they're really hydroscopic. So they, they suck all the moisture out of the air, hold onto it, and it ends up ruining your parts. So you've got, a, you've, got a, you've got drying up to 120 degrees and the automatic feeding for the actual core material, but then everything else goes in the back and it's able to it's able to take from all four of those filament spools uh, across the yeah exactly yeah so um, so in the back in back of the, the small spool holder there will also be like a cover uh, which will kind of also prevent the, 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 the environment air getting to the, the material and also kind of preserve the material for the for while it's printing yeah okay brilliant I mean it's a it's a very 
it's a very attractive package. So let's talk about financials. So yep. let's be really, really clear. This is a commercial grade machine, right? This is not, this is not a, this is not competing with a bamboo H2S or something like that. This is, this is a commercial grade machine. So it's a return on investment case rather than a, hey, I really want this cool toy case. But talk to me about the price for the Pro. So the Pro is the machine itself and then also the materials covered as well. So what's the price for the full kit? Yep. So uh, in terms of uh, uh, the financial side, so uh, we're trying to offer a, a affordable solutions for more uh, users on the market to, to, to enjoy the benefit of uh, continuous fiber FDM printing. So the total combo here, including the cabinet system, you're looking at around the 13,000 euro as, as the retail price. Uh, and also the, the cabinet does sell separately and uh, the price is to be, to be announced in the future. Okay. Um, yeah. Brilliant. All right. Well, thank you very much for the time. No problem. I'll catch you on the next video. All right. Thank you, guys.